Hello everyone and welcome to a bit of a weird fight of the night review. So, um, it is 2020, we're in March, and you may have heard of this thing going around that's been, you know, it's been a bit of a bummer to deal with. It's not my cat, by the way, he's just he's just here. Um, you might know that the thing is COVID-19 or the coronavirus, but every time I want to say it, I'm actually going to say something else. So, I'm going to replace it with the word Copenhagen for the duration of this video, because that is just a satisfying word to say. And also, because I just don't want to talk about it at all. But I have to bring it up. So, um, the fight of the night in question took place on the undercard of last night's fight night, um, fight night card. Yeah, it was a fight night card. Um, and it was between Marina Moroz and Myra Bueno Silva. It was at the Ginacio Nilsson Nelson Arena in Brazil, in Brazil. And it was held behind closed doors. So... There wasn't really a crowd to react. The only people there were the event organizers, uh, Dana White, obviously, the fighters, the referees. Joe Martinez was the um, announcer for the night. That obviously the commentators, um, <clears throat> the coaching staff, um, like doctors as well. You know all the usual like stuff that you actually need for the UFC. Well, for, for the for the arena. You don't necessarily, well, you do necessarily need the crowd, but there wasn't one there because of the Copenhagen thing. So, um, I'm just going to try and break down the fight as best as I can. So here we go. So the fight starts, and um, you can immediately tell that there is a difference, and this is a story that, that sort of develops over time as the fight goes on. So it starts off with leg kicks from both sides, and at the start, Marina is sort of like pulling away with it a little bit more. And that's sort of the story for the main, like, three rounds of the fight. Like, Marina Moroz is landing the... She's landing more shots, she's landing more consistently, but she's also backing away more because Myra Bueno Silva's strikes are a bit stronger. And it does sort of, like, become the main thing throughout the entire three rounds, and it does last the four three rounds, and it's a really good fight. It's just weird to talk about because of the Copenhagen debris. So, obviously, you know, fight starts on the feet. Both are, like, starting with leg kicks. Then, eventually, Silva starts landing some big shots, causing Moroz to back away, but it's not like Moroz isn't doing anything. She starts landing some really good body strikes. They do eventually clinch against the cage, and there is a moment as well where Silva lands a spinning back fist. Moroz lands her own one as well, but Silva's one just looked like it hurt more. And there is some more clinch work as well, until eventually, near the end of the round, Moroz gets a good takedown and gets really good control. Starts landing ground and starts landing strikes to the body. She lands a really good elbow to the body while she's mounted up. And it's sort of interesting how that sort of, like, Moroz is saving grace. Not just the body shots, which are really good, but, like, her takedown work and grappling was really good in this fight. There wasn't any submission attempts at all that I can remember, but her wrestling was pretty good. I think that is sort of what, what edged her out winning round one because if you're just looking at it more objectively you would dare say that silver she's landing um like heavier shots obviously as i mentioned mm -hmm. earlier but morose is landing more even though she's backing away a bit more and it does say so on the numbers like by the end like i think byra only landed about let's say about 16 17 shots in round one that all really hurt also in round one morose landed about 55 you know at a rough guess that i can remember so it is it is a bit of a strange one. And this does bleed into round two as well. Um Marina does get the takedown a bit earlier. And she does go for some really good ground pounds. There's a really good moment in the clinch as well against the cage where like they switch back positions. I think Silva sort of has the back and Moroz manages to get out of it and get hers too. And this is where Moroz starts landing a bit more. I believe she catches a leg kick in this round, actually, from Silva, and then takes her down. But Silva was still, like, pressing forward and landing big shots. Round three it was definitely probably Silva's best round, even though, like, spoiler alert, she didn't win the fight. Um, Moroz did. But, um, yeah, like, Silva landed... She put together a really good combo. It was, like, this, this knee combo, and then this, like, hook, then this upcut. And it opened a cut on Moroz's head as well, and there was quite a bit of blood. Not sure if an open cut is a good idea when the Copenhagen disease is flying around, but there's only so much you can do. And Moroz just really, like, managed to tough it out. And Moroz toughed out, like, a really tough flurry from Silva, and it speaks volumes to both of them. The fact that Moroz took so many shots ahead and was still standing, Silva took tons of really good shots to the body, like the body hooks from Moroz. Moroz's boxing was on point to the body, especially. Um... You know, the fact that Silva took so many body shots and she was still going as well, that speaks volumes of, like, both these women's toughness. 
as I mentioned, that this is going to be a bit of a weird review because, you know, you usually try and judge these things on crowd reaction as well, but there wasn't a crowd there. Still, still a good fight, obviously. Um, I wouldn't put it in my top 10, but from what we got, I thought it was really enjoyable. I thought both women did a great job. I feel like Moreau's winning was the right call, even though it was surprisingly back and forth, even though she did get the better of it by just landing more shots. There's not really a lot else I can think to add, just good fight. Right, right person won in my opinion, and I really hope that this Copenhagen thing goes away sooner rather than later. Now, end of video announcement sort of thing, the next thing you'll probably see from me is most likely going to be the PBW, well the next PBW episode, the Go Home Show for Capture the Crown 2, uh, which will hopefully come on this Friday, because that's what I'm trying to do now, because I'm trying to like, get three, three episodes in before a pay-per-view and sometime between the pbw episode and the pay-per-view i'm probably going to have the tu on a backtracking episodes um put out as well hopefully written and like i'll i'll at least get the very brief history of them done i hope and i will see you all um tuesday most likely yeah hero do you have anything to add he does not as always thank you for watching you're awesome bye bye